Right away, before I start talking about last night's Legend of Korra episode, I want to give a brief um, explanation why I didn't talk about last week's episode, The Sting. Uh, it's because my computer was being an asshole when it came to to making the, the video, and it finally, like, started not being an asshole on, like, Tuesday. So, I just thought, you know, fuck it. And there really wasn't that much... I gotta be, I gotta be honest, I really didn't find much interesting stuff to talk about from last week's episode. It was kind of a eh episode for me, and maybe one or two cool moments that I really could go into detail about, but really, I just didn't find much to talk about. And, uh, I didn't care for the twist last week that, oh, Sora, not Sora, <laughs> sorry, I'm still in Kingdom Hearts mode, Korra has lost her memory. Oh, she's lost her memory. And I just thought, eh, I don't think I like this twist. But after last night's episode, I take it all back. If we needed that stupid twist to get this story, I love it, okay? <laughs> I fucking love it. And finally, we get to the episode that I have been waiting for this whole season, where it finally shows the origin story of the first Avatar. And this lived up to all of my expectations and even managed to surpass them. This is an amazing episode. This is easily the best episode in this season so far. This is the best episode of Legend of Korra ever. And this is the best this is better than most episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender. That is how much I love this episode. And right away, the first thing you'll know about this episode, when it finally shifts to uh, the, the, the origin story, with Korra being dunked into this pit, which reminded me a lot of the Lazarus pit that Ra's al Ghul uses, uh, she starts to, she has to reconnect with her past lives in order to regain her memory. And this is where we get the story of Juan, the first airbender. I mean, not first airbender. First avatar, sorry. And the first thing you'll notice is it has a very different art style. And it's beautiful. It, it definitely gives off the vibe that this is a much more ancient world than what we were accustomed to seeing. And it seems very Studio Ghibli-esque. And it's something I wouldn't be surprised if Isao Takahata, someone like Isao Takahata, had a hand in drawing. And this, it's really beautiful. And we meet Juan, who lives on the island of one of the, the lion turtles that gave Aang the ability to, to, uh, to take away bending and to energy bend and he lives on it where this lion turtle gives out the power of fire and Juan is pretty much it reminded me a lot of Aladdin where he was kind of, he was an outcast and he lived among like his very few friends and they were outcasts as well and he's part of the peasants where the higher like people that have a lot of money, have a lot of food, and like most of the other people are starving. And these people, I think it was the Chu family, I believe they were called. He steals from them in order to give back to his friends. And he seems like a really selfless character. And he reminded me a lot, again, of Aladdin. And I, I really liked him, like, like instantly really liked him. And he decides to go on a a hunt, a spirit hunt with these, these group, this militia group from his town. And he's given the power of firebending from the lion turtle so he can go out and survive in the forest, which is pretty much a spirit forest. And he goes out there, and he pretty much chickens out. He runs away, but he, he does not give back the power of fire to the lion turtle. He steals it so he can use it against the Chu family to get food for him and his friends. And he fucks up. He gets caught, and he's banished from the kingdom, but he's allowed to keep his firebending so he can survive out in the forest. And I love that there's actually a consequence for him stealing fire. I like that this guy is not perfect. That he definitely fucked up royally bad. And there are consequences for that shit. He gets kicked out, he has to survive in the forest, and this is not a nice forest. It's a really 
These these animals in these forests fuck with you. These these spirits are kind of assholes. Where they won't let him sleep, they won't let him eat. They just want him to run and run and run and be scared and tired until he just drops. And the force and the design of the force in this. Uh, and I'm again, I'm gonna be mentioning Studio Ghibli a lot throughout this review of this episode, and it reminded me a lot of Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke with the whole forest being just inhabited by all these different kinds of spirits, all with their own unique looking characteristics, and it was just so cool to like look at all these different spirits, and Princess Mononoke of course, where they have the, the spirit forest, and you have these creatures come out and, and just walk around, it's their home pretty much. So they're allowed to be around as much as they fucking want. And how uh, Juan comes across an oasis, and he's pretty much kicked out by this meerkat looking thing called, I think it was AA or something like that. And this guy's hilarious. This, this spirit is hysterical. He pretty much tells him, You're not welcome here, human! Go back to where you came from! And he pretty much kicks Juan out. He's like, Get the fuck out of here! And then Juan wanders the forest, and uh, he rescues a cat deer from the hunters, the militia that he was hunting with before. And the spirits take note of this, and they go, Wow, this guy is actually noble. He's the first noble human we've ever seen. So let's keep him! Let's, let's, let's let him live here. Fuck it. And the, the cat deer becomes kind of like Juan's, I wouldn't say pet, but more like his companion. In a similar fashion to uh, Yakul, the, the elk in Princess Mononoke to Ashitaka. And you get to see Juan's growth from a boy into slightly, almost a man from this time, and that was interesting, and it's clear that he's matured a lot, he's learned a lot of things, and he's pretty peaceful, and he decides to leave, and it feel again, Princess Mononoke, and it feels like this really huge, epic fantasy story, and I loved that shit, I don't, not since, I don't think ever have they really... Like, I've compared Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra to Studio Ghibli, but this is the first episode where I would not be surprised if Studio Ghibli had a hand in making this, because this feels so much like a Studio Ghibli film, and I mean that as a comp as the biggest compliment I can, I can muster. And it's really interesting how he's want- he, after he leaves, he comes across these two gigantic-ass spirits fighting named Rava, the good spirit, and Vatu, the spirit of darkness. And Vatu tricks him into freeing... tricks Juan into freeing him. And it was kind of stupid that, that Juan fell for that. Because you can tell, one is bright blue, has a calming voice. The other one is dark and black and red and looks evil. But I don't know if they have any concept of color related to whether you're good or evil in this universe. So, I guess it's understandable that, that Juan was tricked into freeing Batu. And he frees him, and he gets away, and Rava goes, Thanks a lot, asshole. You fucked it all up. You you pretty much let darkness go free. Chaos and darkness go free. This is all your fault. If It's all your fault if ruin comes to this world. And, um... Juan feels super guilty, and he, he immediately tries to make up for it by, like, Please, let me help you. Rava, please. And Rava's like, no, fuck off. You already did enough fucking damage. And Juan goes to the the air nomads, and he's so happy that there are other humans there, and he just goes, whoa, humans! And there are actually like spirits freely living among the air nomads. But, of course, Vatu comes, Turn, he has the power to turn all of these, these human, not these human, these spirits into like dark evil creatures, and they start attacking, and he does his best to fend them off, but Vatu pretty much says, ha ha ha, fuck you, ha ha ha, you fail, and then he just takes all the spirits away, and they go, and Juan, that's the moment Juan really decides, you know, like, this is my fault, I have to stop Vatu, and he goes to the lion turtle that's in the air kingdom, and he asks for the power of airbending, <clears throat> 
and he gets it. And he manages to talk Rava into helping him, and Rava's still kind of hesitant about it, like, okay, I'm going to tolerate you only because I, I have to, but I don't like you. And there's a thing called the harmonic convergence where Vatu and Rava have a, a every 10,000 years they have a battle so that Rava can contain Vatu, the, the, the power of darkness. And he finds out that in this time, the harmonic convergence is a year from now. And if they, he does not learn all the elements to stop Vatu, Vatu will pretty much wipe out humanity and just turn this world into like a chaotic clusterfuck. And we don't really get to see much of Wan training with the other elements, water and earth, but it's still cool how he, it, how it shows him he still is developing into a man. And I think really the point, besides him freeing Vatu, the point where he finally realizes that he has a huge weight on his shoulders is when he encounters his friends back at, at back at his fire kingdom they have gotten the power of fire as well and escaped from the kingdom in order to survive out in the wild and it, his former human friends are about to fight his spirit one spirit friends and it was just devastating to watch because you know that fighting between these guys it's inevitable and it was Oh, it was just so sad to watch, and it made me sad because of how desperately he tried to control the situation. Like, stop, stop fighting. This is why I like what what I need to do, and it lays the foundations for what the Avatar stands for. Is that he has to be this barrier for in order to maintain peace between not only humans but between the humans and the spirits, and how all of the, this this battle was personal for one and that made it more impactful for him and it was just so sad how Vatu comes in says ha 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 I'm gonna turn your friends evil and knocks Wan the fuck out Wan wakes up all of his human friends are dead and his spirit friends don't know what happened because they were possessed by Vatu and this is the moment where Wan really goes yes Vatu needs to go because this guy, this evil cannot stay in this world. And I also love Juan's progressive relationship with Rava. Because, it, like I said, it goes from being, oh, I'm going to tolerate you. They become close friends, actually. And I think they actually they grow to love each other. And it's kind of like this weird spiritual love story. Like, technically, literally soulmates where uh, his battle with, and then it finally becomes comes to the harmonic convergence, and it's where the two portals, like, meet, and they, like, try, I, I really didn't get that part, but they, they, like, they have to fight, and Juan pretty much says, if you want to get to Rava, Vatu, you're going to have to go through me, and his battle with Vatu was awesome, I mean, not since Sozin's comment have I seen an Avatar-related battle this epically awesome where the animation just goes nuts and it's like the highest quality animation possible for this kind of stuff and his battle is so badass and when uh, he, Juan puts up his best fight really to no avail and that's when he finally the the avatar is truly born where he goes he tells Ra Rava we have to join spirits and then Rava goes into him and they bond spirits and it gave me you know that warm fuzzy feeling you get when you're seeing something really badass and cool it gave me that warm fuzzy feeling when uh when Rava bonds with Juan's spirit and becomes the avatar for the first time goes in the avatar mode and she says we are bonded forever and the avatar theme kicks in as he starts fighting Vatu again with this newfound power that was so Man, that words cannot describe how awesome that was. And he does manage to contain Vatu, puts him in this this portal, tells him, you will be contained here for 10,000 years, 
and explains a lot about the portals and why Unalak wants to open them because as a result he, he he talks the other spirits into leaving the material world and going into the, back into the spirit world and before I forget I really whoever did the, the voice work for Juan fantastic this guy incredible performance and I just I, I'll look him up later <laughs> but and also we flash to about I'll guess about 50 60 years later where Juan is old is an old man he's dying on the battlefield and he basically tells Rava you know even though I locked Vatu away I failed at my mission because evil and cruelty still exists in this world and Rava pretty much says don't worry we will be together for all of our lives and this is one of those rare times where you actually see a character in the in any of these series die on screen and it was pretty impactful where and this this shows how the avatar cycle is made because then Rava and Juan are reborn as uh, well uh, what I'm gonna assume an airbender and Korra wakes up from this because she manages to connect with her her past lives and she knows what needs to be done so she's led out of the fire temple where she's she was dropped into that healing thing and the fire nation have secretly been breeding a herd of air bison so she takes flying air bison so she flies takes one of them and I'm gonna guess she's going either to the north, the South Pole. I, I'm gonna guess she goes to the North Pole. And as a final thought, before I make like give up my my overall thoughts of this, you see a, a a patch of land, and I think that was a hint. It looked like the back of one of the lion turtles, and really. Uh, because the lion turtles really had no purpose in the world after uh, Juan became the avatar, so they disappeared. And it look I'm gonna assume that was like a little nod to the lion turtle that gave Aang his his energy bending. So that was episodes seven and eight, beginnings, parts one and two. And, like I said, this was an amazing episode. This is the best, uh, just one of the best hours of television I've ever seen. Uh, it was, this was incredible. This was really, really incredible. And I love all the, I, I don't know if they're intentional or not, but the, t the references to Studio Ghibli films and the different art style to where this was, make it feel more mythic and epic. And I I love this episode. I don't know how they're going to top this episode. Really, it was truly fantastic. And I can't wait to watch it again. And I've heard rumors that there isn't going to be a Legend of Korra episode next week. What the fuck? I need my Legend of Korra fix Friday nights. Just, ugh, pisses me off. So anyway, uh, but I, I'm... I'm I'm tied over with this episode because really we got two episodes in one. So if they want to take a break, I understand no matter how frustrating it might be. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe. And as always, have a good one.